The missionary starter package of Mr. Mac includes one wool blend two pant suit, four wrinkle free dress shirts, four washable ties, and a pair of Echo or Johnson and Murphy walking shoes. The missionary starter package at all 10 Mr. Mac stores. Coming up next on BYU Basketball with Dave Rose, presented by Siegfried and Jensen. The coach recaps the Portland and Gonzaga games and previews the West Coast Conference Tournament. Watch the season finale of BYU Basketball with Dave Rose next on BYU TV. I've had 40 surgeries in my life. If someone tells me I can't do something, try me. And I'll just turn around and do exactly what they say I can't do because I can do anything. It can't be. Michael Jordan wore these sneakers. They are MJ sneakers. And I've got to get them now. There's going to be a lot of changes around here. Yeah. yeah I can see that already. Yeah. What? One, two, three. Three. Coming up on BYU Basketball with Dave Rose, it's our season finale as the Cougars get set for the West Coast Conference Tournament in Las Vegas. Coming up on tonight's show, Coach Rose previews tourney time, plus we're joined here in Studio C by Luke Worthington, a team captain, and Coach Rose's wife, Cheryl. BYU Basketball with Dave Rose starts now. I think this is a really tough, hard-nosed group of guys that you know, are giving out all they have. Drives the end line, sends high to Haas, pulls, fires, and scores! Pass Melson, hands off straight corner Eli. to Zach, back to Bryant for three again! Elijah Bryant! This is BYU Basketball with Dave Rose, presented by Siegfried & Jensen, live from Studio C in Provo, Utah, with your host, the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. Wow, for a final time this season. Good evening, Cougar Nation. Welcome back inside the beautiful BYU Broadcasting Building on the Brigham Young University campus here in Provo, Utah, as we cap off our run of weekly shows, giving you a closer look inside the BYU basketball program. We thank the BYU fans who have joined us in Studio C tonight and all season long. Great crowd, and we invite Cougar Nation to be a part of tonight's show by submitting questions for our Q&A portion of the show. Use the hashtag Rose Show on Twitter to get a question in for Coach Rose. Always a good time of the show. And by the time our first episode of this show aired back in November of 2017, the season was already underway, but already here we are at the end. 31 regular season games in the books, and the Coach, time to get ready for the conference tournament. And it seems that the older I get, the quicker the seasons go. I'm not sure if you feel the same I way or not. It's, yeah, that's the same thing. I'm getting a little bit younger. You're getting older. <laughs> We're going to meet in the middle here in a few years. Yeah. Thank you. I think that uh, this season has been, um, it's just been tremendous. And I, I know there's, there's a lot of people that have a lot of opinions. And that's the beauty of today's world is that uh, we get to hear all those opinions. Back when I started coaching, it didn't really matter because you couldn't hear them. They just talk around their table. But the water cooler really was just the water yeah, cooler. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody gets a shot, but I'm going to tell you about this team. This team is as tough, uh, tough as team as far as just their grit and their determination um, as any team I've ever coached. And and I think they have extremely high character. I think they have been able to rebound from really tough situations. The fact that you know you you get right before our, our first game. We lose one of our best players and best friends, you know, Nick's friends with all the guys and just a tight guy with everybody. And, uh, and then you got to move on and then you got to take that next step. And I think then we get, you know, a couple guys hurt and Dalt's hurt and then we got Ryan's hurt and Braden's hurt. And all these guys did was just, hey, they just came in the next day and put their nose to the grindstone and continued to work. And we continued to, we got on a great win streak in, in non-league games and, and, uh, you know, had a shot to beat St. Mary's here in the Marriott Center. And uh, this team never lost faith, never lost confidence in each other, never lost confidence in the staff. Hardest practicing team maybe we've had all year. I, mean, I can only remember one or two practices where the guys were a little bit sideways. I, I can remember days when they were down a little bit. By the end of practice, 
we were set, ready to go for the week. So uh, I'll, I'll always remember this team as fighters and guys who just um, want to win. And it was a bit of a different deal because it happened earlier in the offseason, but you lost a, a great player off last year's team, too, in Eric Mika, and that's a big part of and the that puzzle. was unexpected. Yeah. And, and one of the things that's really difficult uh, here is to replace unexpected roster changes because we're our, our, our scholarships are out there for a couple of years with missionaries and and uh, you know younger guys and it's just it's hard just to go out and say all right let's go get another guy that's got three years and that takes the spot of another guy when he comes back and so I mean there's a lot of things that are my problem that are not everybody else's problem but that's why I have the opinion of this team that I do because We've been through a lot, and these guys are ready. I talked to them today. We practiced hard, but we're, we're, we're a good defensive team. We're a good offensive team. Uh, we've got a great balance of players. We just need to put, you know, three games together, and we'll all get what we want. Let's take a quick look at how this regular season wrapped up for BYU last week. And it began up on the road in, uh, in Portland where it was snowy and icy, but your guys were hot. That was, that was unbelievable to go up there and – see all that snow in Portland. I mean, there was probably six inches of snow on the baseball field. Yeah. The baseball players were all rolling it up and throwing in these golf carts. It was, that doesn't have anything to do with the game, but uh, <laughs> it was kind of interesting. But I'll tell you what, our guys here in this game, we were connected. We were connecting on both ends. We defended really well all game long. Uh, you know, you'll get to starts off with the, with the big three, but there's Dalt. We had great balance. We had four guys, you know, scoring double figures and, um, and then you can, you can just see that our guys, the, the, the whole game, uh, you know, they were determined that uh, we were going to go up there and get this win. Great move by Jashir and kicks it to Zach for, you know, a perfectly designed layup and, you know, in our offense, which is one of our, the options that we have. So One of the good young players in the league there in Shaver. Shaver got off. He, yeah. The one thing that would probably, you know, we could go back and do over is probably do a little bit better job on Shaver. We, no one else on the team got double figures, but he had a pretty good night. Eli hit, hit you know, shots from the perimeter. They go underneath the screen there, and he pops back and hits it. And uh, I, I was just really, really uh, proud of the guys of how, how we played. And it was a solid game from start to finish. Nice second half by Luke here, too. Yeah, there's a, a great pass by, uh, uh, by TJ, and you know, he gets banged up a little bit. But he's back. And I'm just telling you, that's just the toughness of these guys is that, you know, they're, they're going to respond. I got a lot of confidence in them as we go forward here. So BYU won that thing by 12 to set up. Your home finale, which came this past weekend, the 72-60 is your final. Good shooting day. And uh, again, the fact that uh, BYU got that kind of day from the bench is always a good sign. And, uh, and, 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 and also, you hit seven three pointers in a game. Our team's going to win most of those games. And, um, you know, we got to the free throw line there a, a little bit. That, that, those are all things that really help us get that number, you know, close to 70, close to 80. So Zags came in on the weekend. That's, uh, so you've played the Zags 14 times in the regular season since you've been in the WCC. They've been ranked 12 times of the 14. They came in sixth this weekend. Yeah, this is, a, I mean, it's a, just a great program. Mark has great teams every year, but the program itself, they won 19, 18 out of the last 19 conference championships. He, he knows how to recruit to his, uh, his team and his roster and what they do and how they play, and he's deep. He's got guys that come off the bench that – uh, are consistent all night long, but we we got down early and then we got on a nice little roll yeah. here. You know, Eli hits a three, we really move that ball here. We we bring the thing within two, and then we get another shot that is probably three quarters down that would have put us ahead by one. Uh, but they hit a long three to go in. We go down five, and we got off to a slow start coming out of the locker room uh, offensively. And uh, but then we you know we did a little bit better uh, getting the ball down and low. We just couldn't really hit a shot from the perimeter and. And it seemed like they had four or five guys that were just really good at it. I think we learned a lot about what we can do defensively when we get to play them again the next time. But uh, I'll tell you, Mark's team was ready to win a conference championship that night. You watch them, and we, you watch, usually I watch about six or seven games of the previous, uh, their previous games before they play us, each team. And uh, this was a highlight film from all of those games. <laughs> they usually get one or two guys that are really rolling yeah. and cooking, and that's how they win. They had four or five, six guys that, that night that were just really on it. And they, they didn't want St. Mary's anywhere near the, the, the title of uh, the, the 2018 WC regular yeah. season you know, conference championship. They, they wanted that thing for themselves. Yeah, they, they had clinched a share going in, but it was all about getting it out right. And that they did. It's really amazing, too. They've, they've, of the last 17 titles they've won, 15 have been all theirs. Yeah, and, and you know, I'll, I'll just tell you that uh, we beat them in the... Uh, 
the first time was in uh, the, what, the sec second or third round of the NCAA tournament. Right before you joined the league. To go yeah. to the, the Sweet 16. And, you know, Mark tells me, to, you know, to this day that, uh, you know, if they wouldn't have won the conference tournament that year, they wouldn't have got in in the NCAA tournament. But uh, they were underdogs. They were, I think, the ninth seed, the 10th seed in St. John's was the ninth seed, and they upset them. And then everybody picked Gonzaga to beat us. We were the three seed, and I think they were the... I think they were the 11. I yeah. thought they, they played... They, they were the and, uh, 11 or 12. And we yeah. beat them pretty good. I think it was an 18 or 19-point game. Uh, and, and he told me that the, the, that that team... Uh, Every team since then has been better than that team. Oh, wow. <laughs> so yeah, he's, uh, they're on a roll pretty, pretty good, get, you know, replacing their guys. And that's what they do is they don't, they don't really, you know, kind of bring guys in to, to work them out and get better. And, and they bring guys in that are ready immediately. And um, it's, it shows. Yeah, a great target to have at the top uh, to hunt down. What would they and at, that, at that time when we played, the reason I was talking about that, I had no idea we were going in this league. You know, I didn't find out till about four or five months later that that yeah, was a this was going to happen. That was an, a, an option, and, and you know, I uh, so I go in that whole first summer thinking that's what we're going to be playing. I'm thinking, well, every team since then has been better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was my point. I was trying to make. <laughs> <laughs> well, 18 conference games are in the books now in the WCC. Smoke clears, and once again, we see uh, the Zags up top. Uh, St. Mary's the game back. BYU has that three seed. Then you, it's interesting that you there's a, there's a three-way tie for fourth. And so technically, you're getting a fourth place team as a sixth seed because of the tiebreakers. Yeah, when we're getting, you know, look at the overall record. We're getting the best team. Best uh, of the four. Yeah, best of the four. Some of the three fourth place yeah. teams. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, and we played them twice and, you know, won one, lost one. So it'll be a, a really contested game. You know, the one thing that's interesting there, BYU in third. And uh, that's where we were picked to finish to start the year. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people, after we lost Nick, thought that that would be really hard for us to, to achieve. And so, I'm going with this, that these guys are, they're tough guys, and I, I, I like what they've accomplished, and a lot of people will be upset for me saying that because, you know, we're supposed to win the league, and we're supposed to be the best team, but I'm telling you right now, this group, I, I wouldn't trade them for anything. They're giving it everything they got. We saw the bracket briefly there, and we'll talk more about San Diego in the next segment, but uh, I, I've never gotten tired of this time of year. I love knowing that we're traveling down to a tournament setting here on the weekend. And, and, and tournament time is so unique and the reason it is is because everybody has got hope of making the tournament again we played all through february and they're you know out of the 335 teams 300 of them you know they're just playing but now they're all playing for a chance to win three or four games in a row and get to the ncaa tournament and it changes the emotions of everything I mean, you walk into the Orleans for that first game and the lights are on, all the crowds are there. It feels way different because you know that you win this game and, hey, you got a chance to keep moving on. You lose it and all your hopes for the year are up, you know, they're upside down. They're probably over. March arrives this week. We're taking our first break. And as we do, want you to know that for one final time this year, you can still enjoy a full hot breakfast buffet. Dinner Monday through Wednesday. A kitchen and a large grassy backyard along the Provo River Trail, all at the residence in Marriott in Provo. When we come back to Studio C, we go through the all-conference honors that came out today. And we congratulate the Cougars on that list as BYU Basketball with Dave Rose continues. Hi, I'm Dave McCann with BYU TV Sports. Each season, we invite companies like yours to be a part of the BYU brand, aligning your business with respected academics and athletics. Becoming a corporate partner means you'll benefit from showcasing your products and services with game day signage, social media, radio, and TV campaigns. Whether on the field, in the stands, or on the air, BYU's here to help your brand grow. Email sponsorship at byu.edu today. Well, I'm Michael Andrew Anderson from Concord, North Carolina. I'm Dylan Michael Anderson from Concord, North Carolina. I grew up with this guy, and one day we were playing. He goes, hey, Mike, you, you know you're adopted? Just out of the blue. He said, yeah, my mom was a nurse at the hospital you were born at. She says you were adopted. I'm like, what are you talking about? What? So I went back to my adopted mother that night. So I said, am I adopted? And she just looks at me like that. Just There's nothing in her eyes. She went stone-faced. And she goes, what do you think? And that's the only time we ever spoke about it. That messed me up. I mean, with not knowing anything about my own existence, anything would be great. To meet a close relative, this it would be wonderful. Fifty thousand dollars, that's nice. Uh, we are going to win that, but just trying to have answers. Anything that helps him go forward in life, that's what I want. That's it. Does that mean I get fifty thousand dollars from him? That's much. That's been much. <laughs> I try. 
Next time on the Story Trek reunion episode, I'm back in the Granite State where years ago I shared the story of a woman fighting a fatal disease. Apparently it will kill me one day. Now, dramatic changes in how they happen. I'd either be in Manhattan or Paris, probably. They could be anywhere. Why they choose to live this lifestyle instead. You got the height, I got the looks. That's why I figured. <laughs> what will soon separate twin brothers. Yeah, we became best friends. I'm glad he's around. Join me from New Hampshire tonight on the Story Trek. BYU Basketball with Dave Rose is presented in part by the BYU Creamery, the classic BYU tradition. Have a scoop today. And by Smith's. Low prices, market fresh at Smith's. All right, we've reached the end of the season and the end of the West Coast Conference campaign. That means a postseason honors. They came out today. Coach Rose, let's see who you and your coaching colleagues picked to honor this year in the West Coast Conference. The four major individual honors are right here. Player, coach, defensive player, and newcomer. Yeah, I think BYU fans will recognize all these guys. <laughs> uh, you know, the big fella here uh, from St. Mary's, especially the two games against us, were absolutely tremendous and a huge difference in, you know, in the game. Both of them, Mark's been... Uh, you know, leading that, that squad for years and years. But, you know, he was picked second this year and won the league outright. And I think that's obviously, um, I kind of, I won't give away everything, but I usually vote for the, the coach who wins the league. That's the hardest job. The hardest thing is to win a league championship. And, uh, you know, then the big fella from Portland, I mean, from a UOP, he, he's real blocking shots in there. It's as good as we have had. And I think there's two or three guys that probably could have won that award, but that's, and that's good for Damon and his, his program. And then Zach Norvell, both of them, he hit the big three up there that yep. put him ahead. And, and he's he redshirted last year on that great team. I mean, you talk about having a program. Here's a guy that, you know, is freshman of the year that redshirted last year up there. And so, you know, he's in a, a nice role of, uh, of players and, and being able to fill that roster. Okay, WCC does a 10 man first team. You got two of those 10 players. It's actually you're, you're seven straight years in the league, obviously. You've had two players on that first team in all seven years you've been in this conference. Yeah, well, we, I mean, we have good players. That's that's the issue. How many really, really elite players is, is you know, probably what we need to work on and, and get probably a, a little bit more. But I, I know that Elijah and Yo have had so, you know, I'm reading the article today and realize that both of them scored double figures in every league game except one. Yeah. You know, I went back to look at the games. One was at San Diego for Yo, and then at uh, Gonzaga for, for Eli. But that, that, I think that's what's made it so tough later in the year is that we rely so much on a couple guys. But I really, uh, I'm, I'm happy for them, and they deserve it, no question. And every, every guy on here deserves it. K.J. Fagan is the guy that I feel Jasheer did as good a job as anybody in the league of shutting him down in two games. And Frankie Ferrari can really score for San Francisco. Uh, Hachimura is a guy that couldn't get off the bench on last year's team with Gonzaga and this year's first team all league coming off the bench. Well, didn't not, not starting a single game in which league. Which is, yeah. uh, is tremendous. And then obviously Jock and Emmett are the, the, the heart and soul of St. Mary's and you know they're 27 wins or whatever they got this year. So Josh Perkins hit a couple from uh, Jim Arrange in the gym the other night. You know if you were there I mean, he, he got he deeper every time he shot it. Yeah. It yeah. So uh, I think that's a pretty good team. I'd like to actually coach that team next year. Uh, <laughs> Second team, uh, five players in this league. And uh, by the way, T.J. House was honorable mention, so just outside the top 15. And there you see the uh, the second team picks, including another guy from Pacific. There is uh, Damon's team had best year Pacific's had in some time, obviously. Yeah. Another zag to put on that list. <laughs> it seems like when you when you got the ballot and you're going through it, there's Gonzaga guys everywhere, you know. And and he had six players on the ballot, and I think. Uh, all six of them ended up being somewhere. So they did get something. And then there's an all-freshman team in this league as well. And those are the uh, the picks. Zach Norvell makes another appearance there. And uh, yeah, I, I can remember plays from each of these guys in games you really, played. Really yeah. good young players. I mean, I, I think that's one thing about our league that is, uh, is really encouraging for young players is that the freshmen play and have an impact in this league uh, every year. I mean, just gratefully. Yes, last year, Yoli was a uh, on the all-freshman team, you know, so I... I think that uh, you're always looking forward. I, I, I see, you know, Colby Ross for Pepperdine, and you kind of, you know, feel for him because his coach has been going to be replaced. And mm -hmm. so we'll just see how, how the next year rolls out. But this was a heck of a year. 
And I think in the Ken Pomeroy experience rankings, which kind of takes into account who's got the most experience in every team, there are 32 leagues. WCC, I think, is the sixth least experienced league. So a lot of these guys are coming back in, in this conference next yeah. year. Yeah, and I, you know, I, I hope they all do come back. But what happens a lot of times is some of these, um, you know, so-called bigger schools or they poach these guys, you know, and we've lost, San Francisco's lost quite a few. I just can't imagine that team with Devin Watson and, you know, some of those guys have, have left over the years. But, uh, you know, hopefully we get them all back and this league just continues to get stronger and stronger. Well, with the awards of being handed out in the Orleans Arena now getting tournament ready, let's uh, get into BYU's quarterfinal assignment on Saturday. And David's team, he played only uh, 10 days ago, the Toreros of San Diego. Yeah, and we played, these, we played them really well. It, it was a... Uh, as far as competing is concerned, we didn't shoot the ball very well, and it, it really led to a, a frustrating night for us. But uh, I think there's a lot of things here that uh, you know we can you know really work on and, and, and get better in the next couple of days. I think they're in a little bit of uh, uncertainty, you know, with, with their coach and some of the issues that he's had this week. But we'll just concentrate on our guys and what we can do. And uh, I hope it's confidence. I hope our guys have confidence in our ability the ultimate ability, which is to win the game, but also to be able to guard them, rebound, uh, score, and, and do the things that uh, we do well uh, at, together as a group. As coach alludes to it there, USD will have a new coach on the sidelines in, in Las Vegas. Acting head coach Sam Scholl, who played for USD, will call the plays after Lamont Smith was placed on administrative leave in the midst of a domestic violence investigation. Coach Rose, tough time for the team. If we're talking about the players on that team, an important time of the year, they got to get themselves ready to go here. Yeah, and I think, you know, we talked about this a couple weeks ago with uh, going into the Pepperdine game. Every player has a, the, the, an individual relationship with that coach, and um, it'll be interesting to see how they respond. We'll see it as a group because we'll, we'll play the team and see how they go. But, um, you know, Lamont is, uh, uh, is a really good basketball coach. And uh, I wish, you know, him well. The whole situation is uh, still kind of up in the air and being investigated. But, um, you know, hopefully all every, everybody involved turns out okay. Well, it's our final show of the season, so our final player guest of the season. He'll actually be a return visitor from our very first show of the year. Team captain Luke Worthington is back to help us preview the postseason. And uh, they probably know him better to represent the team because he's played in more BYU postseason games than anyone on this roster. Yeah, and, and Luke is, uh, you know, is one of the, the favorites in the locker room. I think all the guys call him Cap, you know, because he's one of the captains. And, uh, and he has some, he, he has just great advice. I just love bringing him in and talking to him once a week just to kind of get his insight on what's going on and how things, uh, from his point of view, which is really from the team's point of view. And so that's already pretty regular occurrence. He's been, he's been as probably as regular as any captain I've ever had, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, I've really enjoyed it. All right, Luke's coming up. Folks, Utah Community Credit Union, helping people make smart decisions every day. At UCCU, you can get a low fixed rate on a home equity line of credit and lock in that low rate for 10 years with absolutely no closing fees. To learn more, visit uccu.com. After the break, it is Captain Luke Worthington with us. This is BYU Basketball with Dave Rose, presented by Siegfried and Jensen. If I got hurt and was laid up at home, I wouldn't even think to call a lawyer. What a hassle. I'd want to meet them first. What if I told you that for your first consultation, your lawyer will come to you, home or hospital? Really? Really? They do that? If you've been seriously injured, we'll come to you. It's your job to get better. It's our job to deal with the insurance companies and protect your legal rights. Learn more at SiegfriedandJensen.com. Rule number one, karate for defense only. Rule number two, fast learn rule number one. Secret of Miyagi family karate. I don't get it. Practice, you will. You break a log like that? Don't know. Never been attacked by tree. Never put passion before principle. Even if win, you lose. Okinawa, Anna, very serious. Your sensei teach you how to fight with spear?
Tomorrow on Studio C, we fight the monstrous gorilla bear. Yeah. It's even worse than it sounds. <laughs> Actually, it's exactly like how it sounds. Like I said, we fight the gorilla bear, which is a gorilla bear. It eats bananas that swim upstream. That's the bear part. There's a time for everything. When it's time for basketball, locked in to play hoops. I'm Blaine Fowler from After Further Review, and you're watching BYU TV. See the good. Welcome back to BYU Basketball with Dave Rose, with your host, the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. We are back inside Studio C for this season's Rose Show Swan Song. BYU Basketball with Dave Rose presented by Siegfried and Jensen. We've been with you all season long Tuesday nights on BYU TV and BYU Radio. We use the hashtag Rose Show for a chance to get your question asked during our Q&A segments. Well, sitting alongside Coach Dave Rose, I'm Greg Grubel. And as we welcome in for an encore appearance, player who helped to uh, tip off our season of shows back in November. Please welcome back team captain Luke Worthington. <laughs> See you again. Hello. Not everyone gets a return visit. Yeah, that's true. So, uh, season opener and season finale for you. Coach Rose yeah. said that uh, you're somebody that he's talked to pretty frequently throughout the season. How often would you say that you and Coach Rose uh, sit down and uh, chat it up? Uh, pretty frequently. I'd say, you know, I think. Um, Maybe like once a week or something like that, we'll sit down and, and talk about, I don't know, just the team in general and how everything's going. So, Yeah, why do you think that's important in your role as you see it? I think, it, I'm assuming from, from his perspective, he just likes knowing how, how the guys are doing. And I feel like I'm pretty connected with a lot of people on our team, pretty much everyone. So I, uh, I just try to be honest with them, say, speak my mind, um, and also maybe give advice as to, what the guys are feeling at this certain point in time and how we can encourage them or, you know, individually what the best approach is to um, just having success because that's the goal. Coach, you always know what you're going to get from Luke, regardless of the situation. And his role is modified throughout the course of the season. No one better to kind of roll with the punches than this guy. Well, what's amazing in, in, in the conversations is that you know that Luke is real. What you're getting is real. You're not just getting what, uh, you know, he thinks I want to hear. And... Uh, that's why we keep talking because we've actually had a couple guys in in that we're, we're we're trying to help get through some tough situations, and I'll bring Luke in because they know Luke's real. And one thing about Luke is he's had every experience here. Uh, he's a, he's an upperclassman. We don't have a lot of upperclassmen, but he knows what it's like to come here with all the dreams of a freshman and a sophomore and the team and made the NCAA tournament in those years and. And then, you know, decided that he found the spiritual side of this place and went and served a mission. And there are not very many situations that I'm trying to deal with with other guys on the team that Luke hasn't been through himself. So that's the part of it that I really like. Luke, as we head into the postseason, you're coming off last weekend's games at Portland, home to Gonzaga. How do you feel the team uh, uh, acquitted itself during the weekend to get set for tournament play last weekend? Um, it was a good win at Portland. Any win on the road is important, so um, that's definitely going to help us because I think we've, in general, um, brought our best on the road as far as effort comes and, you know, occasionally the shots don't fall, but I think, um, especially with the time that we'll have to get in that gym in Vegas, I have confidence that everyone's going to be um, ready to go and clicking on all cylinders, so we're excited to get down there and snag some more, some more road wins because I think the team is playing um, as together as, as they can, and it's just a matter of if Shots are going to fall, which I believe they will. Coach Rose talked about how much he likes the makeup of this team, the character makeup of this team. Now that you've come to the end of the regular season, how do you look back, knowing there's more games to play, of course, how do you kind of reflect on the campaign and, and, and how the team took itself from start to finish? It's, you know, it, it's so much about how together the team is. And I think that this is one group that really um, start to finish the agenda for the most part has just been winning, which that might sound kind of ridiculous to people who who haven't been in that team atmosphere, but different people can have agendas frequently, um, whether it's pursuits after after college or they might be too f more focused on their schoolwork or different things. So 
just the fact that we believe in each other, have confidence in each other, I think is maybe what you're hinting at as far as that um, kind of that approach that we've had all season long. And I think it's been really encouraging. And that's a fun team to play for when you know that people want to win. Um, that's that's just a group you want to be with. Unfortunately, we've gotten a lot of wins, had some disappointing losses for sure, um, but we've been able to deal with those well and just kind of move forward. Whether you pre-mission or post-mission, BYU kind of rolls along with a certain standard that's kind of set that you guys, do you feel like a, 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 a motivation or an expectation to make sure that you guys keep it where it needs to be? Uh, you know, because you went away for two years, came back, and you're still winning a ton of games. Yeah, uh, and I think that starts with, with the coaching staff, with Coach Rose and all the coaches. They have an expectation to win, and they are the ones recruiting the players and calling the plays and doing everything to, to help us be in that position. And so um, we, we try our best to follow their lead. We're not always the most obedient children. Um, <laughs> but, but, yeah, we try to, to do things the right way, and it's, it's, it's a different – team schematically than it was before my mission, the way that we're playing the game. But um, I love the way that everyone's working together to get wins. And I think it's brought a lot of success both before and after my mission so far. So, Coach, we're going to see some clips of Luke, I think. Uh, how, how have you seen his game uh, improve throughout the course of the season? Well, I, th I think the most uh, the thing you say about Luke, you put him on the floor and our team is better defensively no matter who we're playing or what defense we're playing. He is a a uh, very vocal player and he's a player that is connected to everyone he knows what everybody else is supposed to be doing and then he, he's, he's as vocal as any guy we've had so and then on the offensive end he's found a way to really make an impact in the game and uh, uh, I, 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 I you know I think his career high up at at uh, at Gonzaga that game was uh, you know as good offensively as, as our team could find him in, in opportunities and he was just really good finishing but He's become a, a guy that we, we, we started the game with him, throwing the ball in, the down low against some of the best post players that we've played against, and he scored. So, and, and then he's really improved his, himself at the free throw line. So I think that uh, he's had a really, really good year this year and next year could be even better. You feel you de developed an offensive go-to? Yeah, I feel really comfortable down there. Um, and so much of that is because of the situations I'm getting the ball in. Again, it comes to the coaching and my teammates and the way that they get it in there. And um, it's a lot easier to score when you have so many offensive threats on the floor. And with our guard play, with Yoli, and with all the rest of those guys, they're just, um, you have to respect them. And so when I get the ball, everyone's kind of scared to leave those guys, so it makes it easy for me. <laughs> and I just go and put the ball in the, in the, on the rim. So. And, and he's one of the big guys who actually likes yeah. to get the ball down there yeah. and yeah. score down there. Yeah. You know? yeah. A lot of big guys nowadays, they love to be yeah. somewhere else. <laughs> he loves to be down there. So. Yeah. You guys, uh, you played Saturday, mm -hmm. off Sunday. You took, uh, was Monday off as well, Coach? So you're back at it today. Give us a sense of first day back, tournament week. Um, good energy. I mean, I was... I was pleasantly surprised with everyone. I knew, even myself, I wanted to make sure I was trying to get my motor going for, for another week that we had coming ahead of us because you got a good amount of practices. Um, even with taking Monday off, you still got a good four practices before the game. So um, I was definitely pleased to see that everyone was bringing energy and they were helping me to um, not get through practice, but, but really get better today. And that's what we need. We need to get better tomorrow and the next day. And then by Saturday, we should have our, our best selves ready for the game. So. And the San Diego scout still pretty fresh in the memory after only 10 days. Yeah, right? yeah. So when we got that poll, I was like, well, I still know the scouting report on them. <laughs> Wasn't, not going to be too many surprises there. So what are your recollections of the game down at their place? They are um, they're a tough team. But I think when we play right and again, when the shots that when we take the right shots, um, we have confidence that those are going to fall, and I have no doubt that down in Vegas will be successful. Um, I think they're a good defensive team, we know that, so we're going to have to execute at a high level. But again, with all this preparation and already knowing their team, I think we'll be definitely ready to go. Okay. Uh, what are your career plans, by the way? Post career basketball. Plans? Post basketball. Yeah, I'm, um, I'm actually really interested in athletics as a whole. I, I wondered if you might want to coach someday. I, I would think coaching could be fun. Um, I don't that's know. That's not that fun. Yeah. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. That's, AD. Yeah, that's what no, I'm that's saying. That's way funner. I thought, uh, I mean, I was just referring to coaching like some youth leagues and oh. stuff. I don't know about the higher level stuff because it's a little intimidating. But no, I, I, I do find a lot of interest in athletics. And I think that maybe getting into athletic administration, being an athletic director at some, at some school would be pretty fun. So. 
we'll look into that. Whatever you do, you'll be great at it. You're an awesome captain and a great guest. And thanks for making the return visit here this year. Yeah, thanks a lot. All right, folks, Luke Worthington, give him a hand. Thanks a lot. You can see right here. All right, Cooper fans, remember, basketball season is blanket season. That means Minky Couture. Learn more at softminkyblankets.com. When we come back, a look at the week ahead on BYU TV and BYU Radio. And good news, Coach Rose advancing in the final four of the Infinity Coaches Charity Challenge. That's coming up next here on BYU Basketball with Dave Rose. If you have symptoms such as depression, fatigue, headaches, or an inability to concentrate, you may have low thyroid caused by Hashimoto's disease. We're trained in blood chemistry. We really understand how to look for imbalances in the simple blood test. And once we can identify what those are, then we can customize a course of treatment. Our biggest goal is that we can really teach and educate these patients. Red River Health and Wellness can help with the treatment plan remotely or at any one of our locations. Show. Surprise! <laughs> That's yeah. awesome. Thank you. Guys. Awesome. <laughs> you having a good time? Hey, thank you. What a cool thing that you guys are doing. <laughs> that is the gift of a lifetime. Envy. Watch BYU Sports Nation on BYU TV and BYU Radio apps. I didn't think that would go public. Starting Thursday, catch select WCC tourney action live on BYU TV, including women's opening round and quarterfinal games, plus the men's quarterfinals and the women's semis. And don't forget to watch BYU Sports Nation simulcast on BYU TV and radio throughout the tournament live from Las Vegas at noon Eastern, 10 Mountain. Between games, get team updates and game highlights with our bridge shows. That's WCC Tourney Action on BYU TV and BYUtv.org. Don't miss it. BYU Basketball with Dave Rose is presented by Siegfried & Jensen, helping Utah families for over 25 years. Welcome back to our show. You can watch the 2018 Gorilla Glue West Coast Conference Basketball Championship starting Thursday live on BYU TV. BYU Sports Nation will be down there at noon Eastern with then four live games that day beginning at 3 o'clock Eastern. We continue all the way through next Tuesday on BYU TV. Exciting time of the year. Exciting time for Coach Rose and Cheryl Rose is with us. How to hand for Cheryl Rose on the set this time. <laughs> And this, it's, 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 it's great to see you, and it's great that the news that you're sharing with us that uh, Coach Rose here, for the first time, is in the final four of the Infinity Coaches Charity Challenge. You guys have been involved in this effort for some number of years now, right. and you've raised a lot of money advanced, but yes. final four is a new level for you guys. Final four is, is an amazing level, and this, the exciting thing is he's vacillated between first and second. So we can, we can do this. We can... We can win this challenge, and the money goes to such an, a worthy cause. Um, it goes to the Simmons Center for Cancer Research, which is right here on our campus. Um, and they do incredible work, uh, cancer prevention, cancer, new ways of cancer treatment, um, finding a cure. They're incredible. And um, $100,000 would mean so much to these students and these professors and go such a long ways in their efforts to fight this horrible disease. Coach Rose, thanks to Cougar Nation, you, you won the third round, I think, right? And so if I, my math is right, I think we've accumulated $33,500 off of straight infinity winnings for, uh, for, for the Simmons Center. I think Travis Hansen matched to a number. There have been some other matches involved as well. So it's been a great effort. It has, and, and, and it's, <laughs> it, I'm, not, I'm not a real social guy on the social media, but I, someone set it up on my phone where I just have to hit it and I can vote for myself in about two seconds. We need to get about a million, Every day. We need to get about a million people day. to get the same thing on there. And everybody messes with their phone for a couple seconds a day. And so hopefully we can, uh, we've got 10 days till March, yep. until March 12th or so. And Selection Sunday weekend is when it closes again. So, and, yeah. and, you know, the, 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 I think the most important thing is that, uh, 
you know, it's a contest. We're all competitive. We want to win, you know, but th th this is really serious. I mean, we're talking about people's lives and, and cancer is something that does affect, touched everyone. And, you know, Cheryl is kind of the cancer queen of our family as far as communicating it to them. <laughs> we, it's, it has hit our family hard. Um, I have four sisters and all four sisters have had cancer. I lost a sister seven years ago um, to cancer and before she passed and she was really ill, I got a phone call to do something to speak and it's not, you're good in front of the camera, this isn't my most comfortable place. <laughs> and I kind of hesitated and she said, Cheryl, I need you to be my voice. And she said, I need you to speak for me and all of the other people that are fighting this disease. And so when I get invited to do things like this that don't feel comfortable, I remember my sister Janet and my sister Kathleen that are fight fighting it. Um, she's currently fighting it right now. And we can do that. We have an opportunity right now to be the voice for someone that you know and love that's fought this horrible disease. And all it takes is literally 10 seconds to vote on your phones. And I love Cougar Nation. I, I can't think of kinder, more supportive people. And I think that if we all come together, we can do an incredible thing. And we can fight this ugly disease. And so I would just, you've got the information. We're I We're going to share it here in a second. And yeah, I just yeah. would ask everybody to just not only vote, but I would challenge you to find 10 people that you can get to vote. And then challenge those 10 people to go out and find 10 people that they can vote. Um, I, I really do think we can do this. We, we, we spend a lot of time asking people for money. <laughs> and we just built this you know, annex next door and that was a five year project of sitting down in front of a guy and asking him for his hard earned money. We're just asking for your time now, this is easy. And we're gonna get a lot of money for it if we win. So, um, and, and the cause is, it couldn't be any better. I think one thing that is really interesting, I'd love to have, and the BYU campus has really you know, stepped up uh, to the plate to help us, but all the money uh, the, from the, because you know, we all pick a charity. Each coach pitch, picks a charity, and our charity is right here on campus. The other three charities go off to uh, some other place, and so hopefully the whole campus, the alumni, everybody will get behind this and help these. It's really, the reason we got behind it here is because the, the, the money really goes to the students to help fund their uh, their fellowships while they're here. Their work. They, their and work. and, and they'll, yeah. they'll spend, you know, a summer. Some are on a a summer fellow. Some are on a full year fellowship. And and uh, we got uh, Travis Hansen matched the first one. Up. Hopefully, we could find someone to maybe match the hundred thousand. <laughs> if you get, get there, to the yeah. hundred, just someone call throw us. that just in. Call if you're, you know. One of those guys I asked for a million dollars for the uh, annex. Maybe one of those guys could jump in there. You know, but uh, I do know that uh, this this is really close to home here, and hopefully we can. And, and, you know, it's going to look like, you know, that we're competing and we want to win. That's correct. But the, the important thing is that we can raise a lot of money for these people. Well, I shared my daily vote. You can vote daily on Twitter a little while. Here's how you do it. There's really a few ways to do it. You can go to ESPN.com slash infinity. That's one way. You can go to infinitytimeout.com and vote that way. Or just on Twitter, then use the hashtags. Go to Twitter and use these two hashtags. Hashtag timeout to vote to the number. Timeout to vote and then hashtag Coach Dave Rose, and that'll register as a vote. There are a lot of ways to do it, and it's 11-plus days still left in the voting period. And if we're first, after this entire period, $100,000 to the Simmons Center for Cancer Research. The four coaches involved, just FYI, Steve Prom, Iowa State, uh, Archie Miller, Indiana, uh, Matt Painter, Purdue, and you. And right now, it's you and Coach Prom head-to-head -head right now, just percentage points apart at the top. And so Coach Rose is really close to being number one. Let's keep him there, get him there, and take him to the top here in 11 days. Let's do this. Let's do this. I, um, I can't think of any greater time that you could be spending by, you know, any 10 seconds you could spend better than just pushing that, that vote button. And let's do this for these people. And Coach, because of your own deeply personal connection to the fight against cancer, I just want to ask for Cougar Nation, uh, how are you feeling these days? Well, the other night I wasn't feeling that good. I had flu. <laughs> but I'm feeling pretty good now. I'm feeling really good. And every, I'm still going through a process. You know, every six months I have scans and hopefully they all come back clear. That's what we, clear is good. So that's what we'll hope for. All right, hope everyone's clear on how to vote. Let's get this thing done. All right, <laughs> fantastic. Thanks, Cheryl. Thank Appreciate you, it. Greg. All right, after the break, your questions for Coach Dave Rose from the audience and Twitter. This is BYU Basketball with Dave Rose. When the Sports Nation guys do a show at Deseret First Credit Union, you never know which BYU Sports VIP might show up. 
That's the oh, Cosmo Bill. The Cosmo Bill is rolling up, baby. Woo! Cosmo's here. Hey, maybe Cosmo needs a student checking account or a soda inside. This has already been the best in a minute ever. 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 Now bump that music, Cosmo. Deseret First Credit Union. Proud to support BYU Sports Nation on BYU Radio and BYU TV. I've had 40 surgeries in my life. If someone tells me I can't do something, try me. And I'll just turn around and do exactly what they say I can't do because I can do anything. I tell you, working with your, your wife uh, is, uh, it's actually pretty fantastic because we can complete each other's jokes and sometimes when something funny is happening on set, we don't have to say anything, we just look at the other person and know why we think it's funny. And often those things wouldn't be funny to anybody else. We're just fun and exciting and I think that's us as a couple. My name is Eric Dowdle. As an artist, I've been lucky enough to travel all over the world and meet some of the greatest and most interesting people. Spending time with the locals and learning their history allows me to discover the heart of each city. Each place has a unique story to tell, and I get to tell that story in a one-of-a-kind piece of art. I hope you'll join me on Painting the Town. I believe it's really important to be well-rounded. Being here at BYU is the best decision I ever made. There's a time for everything. When it's time for basketball, walked in to play hoops. My first love is basketball. I want to play basketball as long as possible. I love the challenge. What up? I'm Jerem Jordan from BYU Sports Nation. You're watching BYU TV. See the good in the world. Two, TJ gets past Melson, hands off straight corner Eli. to Zach, back to Bryant for three again! Elijah Bryant, back to back threes, timeout to Gonzaga! Mark View calls a break for 2-10 to go! That was the exciting play of the game Saturday night, presented by Nissan, a proud partner of the BYU Cougars. Nissan, innovation that excites! We're back on BYU Basketball with Dave Rose, season finale edition presented by Siegfried and Jensen here in Studio C. Well, all season long with all of our player and coach guests, we've been getting to know those guests through video vignettes featuring their fellow players and coaches. And the head coach tonight is no exception as we find out how well the guys hit it on the nose when describing Coach Rose. Ooh, boy, how much trouble do I want to get into here? Coach Rose is the greatest human being I've ever met, and I love him and everything about him. And play me all game, please. No, no, but seriously, Coach Rose is a, he's a great guy. He's really funny, honestly. Uh, you, can't, you don't really see that, you know, on TV and stuff like that. You just see his, his hard side when he's yelling at refs or whatever. But uh, he's actually super uh, funny and relatable. And Coach Rose has a really good sense of humor. Coach Rose is hidden talents. I know it's not golf. Uh, when I played at Dixie College, we once played an alumni game. He talks about taking good shots with our guys. He was the king of bad shots. All he did was shoot from about 25 feet every single time he touched it. You know, he has no ego, which in this, this line of work is <laughs> beyond rare. Um, he knows how players feel in certain situations, and he really utilizes that on and off the court inside of games. He, he knows how to manage a team very well. He's, he's just making sure that, that you're prepared uh, for whoever's on the court. He's just one of the smartest coaches I've ever known. Well, those are your guys. Yeah, the one guy got it right. I'm not a very good golfer. <laughs> uh, yeah, but uh, this is a great team, and they're, they're great people. And you know, when you know you love, at this time of year, when you love to go to practice, you know you got a good group. And today's practice was, uh, like Luke said, it was good. The guys were, and, and these are tough ones when, when, when they're disappointed and they come off a, a tough loss. But by the end of practice, they were uh, all together ready to get the next next challenge. All right. The challenge comes Saturday against San Diego. Q&A for the coaches coming up next. This is BYU Basketball with Dave Rose right here in Studio C on BYU whoa, TV. Whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa, whoa, whoa. All right. Oh, yeah. Uh, you're not asking me questions, and I'm not asking these questions either. I got my own questions. <laughs> okay, so we'll put this one right under here. Greg, I got the skinny mic and it doesn't even work, but I'll put it by my mouth. But I'm going to ask you 10 questions, and I guarantee you will not get 10 for 10. <laughs> this. 
This is off the script. Yes, very much off the script. I had to sit here. <laughs> I had to sit here the whole season and watch him ask my guys the dumbest questions. So here we go, okay? No. Question number one. Mm. Name the three primary members of the Canadian band Rush. Neil Peart, Alex Lifeson, Getty Lee. All right. Don't worry, he won't get 10 right. Mark Durant has been your radio partner for the past 21 years. What was Mark's career high in rebounds while he played at BYU? Uh, 12. Uh-oh. Oh. <laughs> All right, you might be in a little trouble here. <laughs> Number three, name this BYU center who played and won two NBA championships with the Boston Celtics. Greg Kite. Greg Kite. <laughs> who has made the most shots in BYU history? Danny Ainge. Oh, my God. I'm gonna, I got to put this down. This is, this is bringing bad luck. <laughs> All right. This TV show ran from 1997 to 2002 on ABC, featuring a free spirited yoga instructor who finds true love in a conservative lawyer, and they got married on the first date. Dharma and Greg. Oh, my God. <laughs> no way. How many guests on this show this season did not get 10, 9 out of 10 in the 10 questions? How many did not get 9 out of 10? Because a bunch of them did, right? Yes. Uh, Luke didn't. TJ didn't. Two? Oh, I told no. you. <laughs> All right. Who else didn't? Four. Oh, four, really? Yeah, you might be five. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> This nation beat Canada to win the gold in women's hockey last week in the Winter Olympics. USA! <laughs> USA! USA! Yeah. In what year did your Calgary Flames win its one and only Stanley Cup? 1989. How old were you then? How old was I? Yeah. I was 22. Mm. Yeah. Good for you. Just about to get married. Yeah. <laughs> And if they would have lost, you would have postponed the marriage, probably. <laughs> All right. What's been your favorite BYU basketball moment since you've been the voice of the Cougars? Wow. I get asked that one actually quite a bit. Um, and I almost never am able to pick one because you have been a part of so many of them. Uh, you better gosh. say something or you're going to get it wrong. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, sweet 16, Jimmer Fred. All right, perfect. Okay, yeah. All right. How many kids and grandkids do you have? <laughs> I have four kids and one grandkid. All right. I got that there one right. Go. Yeah, that's good. That's nine, I'm one of the nine out of ten guys. Nine out of ten. Yeah. Yep. All right. Hey, here we go. Nicely done. Way to go, Greg. All right. Q&A with the coach is coming up next. This is BYU Basketball with Dave Rose. BYU Food to Go's convenient location at 2191 North Canyon Road in Provo makes bringing popular BYU foods to your next event easy. Everything's ready when you need it at the drive and load pickup. You drive in and they load no matter the weather. And stop in the on-site creamery for great BYU chocolate milk and ice cream. BYU Food to Go, bringing campus to your table. Call for details, 801-422-5001. Get outside with the ones you love and enjoy the open road. And the closed one. We believe in family, fun, and experiences that last. And we want to be there as you make new memories over and over again. That's why we're proud to carry the popular Nissan Rogue. Tim Daly Nissan Southtown. Family owned since 1968. My name is Rebecca White, and Jonathan and I have been married for 13 years, and we currently live in McAllen, Texas. I like to think that we can go pedal to the metal. We really are very competitive people, and losing isn't something that we like to do at all. We kind of work off each other, and I think it's really going to benefit us in the long run. We love adventure, and I think winning the adventure would make it even better. Not just completing it, but winning it. I have no doubt we'll, we'll make it to the end. There's not so much a BYU Sports Nation dance, per se, 
but Jerem can't stand it when it's really quiet, you know, so he'll turn on some music and then it's just like, you know, you know, just move the shoulders a little bit. He gave you a dance move? What in the world are you talking about? And I'm looking so just not cool right now. <laughs> he did that for the cameras. That does not happen. <laughs> this, this would be Spencer's. It'd be the stanky leg. Okay. Not mine, Spencer's. That's what we do. We just want to relax. BYU Basketball with Dave Rose is brought to you in part by Nissan, innovation that excites. All right, back on BYU Basketball with Dave Rose, presented by Siegfried and Jensen. Here again is the broadcast schedule for this week. Cougars in San Diego tangle Saturday afternoon at the Orleans Arena, 4 o'clock Eastern, 2 o'clock Mountain, on BYU TV and BYU Radio with the pregame at 1 Mountain on BYU Radio. Back with our final segment of BYU Basketball with Dave Rose right after this in Studio C on BYU TV. Living at Trio is not about retirement. It's about fun. It was so different from everything we'd been taught to expect about senior living. I was delighted when we came and they had these raised gardens. Just love it here. I wish more people knew about Trio. Learn more at btrio.com. You know, I've gone from working sort of 80, 90 hour weeks, been in, in charge of all these people but there's always been something I've wanted to do with this. Honestly, it really has, you know, to go out there and generally make a difference to, to people's lives in really, you know, tough, tough place and, and in tough environments as well. I can't walk away without helping them. Next time on the Story Trek reunion episode, I'm back in the Granite State where years ago I shared the story of a woman fighting a fatal disease. Apparently it will kill me one day. Now, dramatic changes in how they happen. I'd either be in Manhattan or Paris probably. They could be anywhere. Why they choose to live this lifestyle instead. You got the height, I got the looks. That's why I figured. <laughs> what will soon separate twin brothers. Yeah, we became best friends. I'm glad he's around. Join me from New Hampshire tonight on the Story Trek. Tomorrow on Studio C, we fight the monstrous gorilla bear. Yeah. It's even worse than it sounds. <laughs> Actually, it's exactly like how it sounds. Like I said, we fight the gorilla bear, which is a gorilla bear. It eats bananas that swim upstream. That's the bear part. My first love is basketball. I want to play basketball as long as possible. I love the challenge. I'm Spencer Linton from BYU Sports Nation. You are watching BYU TV. See the good. All right, back in our final segment of the show, BYU Basketball with Dave Rose. It is our final show. We thought we'd get back in transition a bit and see how things went in our first season doing the show here in Studio C at BYU TV. Good stuff. Well, now in his 13th season as a head coach of the Cougars, and with 314 wins, Dave Rose has by far the best win percentage in BYU coaching history, and his career win rate ranks eighth nationally among active Division I coaches. He's on pace to, in a couple of seasons, become the winningest coach in Cougar Hoops history, and today he turned 60. Oh, look at this! Cosmo delivering some birthday cake. Happy birthday, Coach. Um... 60. Unbelievable. You're really old. Coach Rose, what's up? It's Lamont. Just wishing you a happy birthday. Thanks for everything you've done for me and for my family. I love you, Coach, and uh, hope you guys continue to have a great year. And uh, I want to say, hey, Cheryl. Bye. <laughs> this business is about relationships. Yeah, those are good guys. I've had a wonderful ride here with these guys, and hopefully we just you know keep on, keep on going. Because I, I think this team is as good as any group we've had, and hopefully we can keep coming together and building this team. All right, Coach Rose, that was the tail end of our look back there. We had, to, we had to leave on the cutting room floor a lot of the funny moments we had. There were a lot of funny moments we had on the, on the show this year. Yeah, well, you can give them to Jerem and, uh, and Spencer, you know, and show them on Sports Play them on Nation. Sports Nation. There was a lot of funny stuff that happened. You know, you're a funny guy. No, well, we, uh, one of the, I, I got to drink some of uh, Yoli's uh, anti-cramping juice one, one game. Oh, that's right. Oh, one show. Yeah, yeah that, that was, that was, was funny. funny. That was funny. Yeah. <laughs> So I, I guess uh, uh, we should probably just talk about what it means to, to get into to Las Vegas and, and, and be 
hopefully ready to win three games well, in four days and do something special. I think Luke referred to it a little bit about we've gone nine, nine straight weeks where we've gone Thursday, Saturday, Thursday, Saturday. We don't play till Saturday. And so we're, we're going to try to, you know, replicate this week into the, the, the proper formula, whatever is, uh, you know, the, the preparation that we need to do. We probably need to play a scrimmage and get up and down a little bit and, and, uh, and just be ready, fine-tuned for, for Saturday. We're playing a, a team we know really well. All right, that will do it. Coach Rose, for this season of BYU Basketball with Dave Rose, special thanks to senior coordinating producer Michael Miner, producer Jerem Jordan, associate producer Tanner Lewis, directors Michael Hunter, Scott Hill, and our entire crew. I'm Greg Rubel. He's Coach Dave Rose. This has been BYU Basketball with Dave Rose, live from Studio C. We will see you in Las Vegas. Go Cougars! I've had 40 surgeries in my life. If someone tells me I can't do something, try me. And I'll just turn around and do exactly what they say I can't do because I can do anything. It can't be. Michael Jordan wore these sneakers, man. They are MJ sneakers, and I've got to get them now. There's gonna be a lot of changes around here.